Once our process is scheduled, let's examine it for process reporting. Now that our process is successfully deployed, our execution history displays in the Manage Process Reporting tab. Let's take a few moments and examine some of the key features. The view defaults to executions launched in the past hour across all atoms. You can set filters to do a new search to see the results. Execution records are highlighted to display document activity. This is a table of everything, including your inbound and outbound document files. You can manually execute deployed processes in specific atoms. The execution view captures some key processing statistics. You can click on the links filter to sort by execution status. You can page through sets of execution records, 25 at a time. You can view high-level process log to see the state of each step kicked off for all documents in a workflow. And you can double-click the last column to view the first error message. This refers to the connectivity issues in the start shape, or the first error occurring against your inbound document set. Not everything is a success, but we will be seeing some errors later in our class. The execution actions are exposed in the gear button drop-down per page per the execution thread and are important for advanced control and debugging. From here you can view the process. This will open up the process in the build page. View the deployment components, which will view and open component versions on the build page. You can view the process state, which is a real-time information about the step, execution, and duration. You can view the extended information. Admin privileges are needed to view the execution, process, atom, and deployment IDs, and the ability to download the execution artifacts. So now what we'll do is exercise 11, process reporting. This is in your book on page 38 to 40. To execute process reporting, we'll go to Manage and Process Reporting. We'll click on the Auto Refresh. We'll set it on, we'll move it over and set it to On. And the Auto Refresh is turned on and the table will be automatically refreshed every minute. We also can refresh manually by clicking on the Refresh button here. For each process we have run, you have a Actions Gearbox. We can click on the Gearbox, and we can select one of many items. We can select, we can view the process, the deployment components, the state, as well as the extended execution. We're going to start off by looking at the deployment components. This is similar to what we saw in the Deploy tab. This will allow you to see the name. This will allow you to click on the item, which will take you to that particular area. It will tell you the type, the revision number, who modified it, and the modified date. Perhaps I click on the map, it will take me out to the map in the build page. Once again, I am getting a message because this is not the latest revision of the map. I can cancel this. The little piece of paper that I have over here is the process log. Process logs come in four statuses, the lowest being debug, then info, which is a generic message, warning, and severe. Uh, everything that we have since our process worked pro properly is in info stage. It'll give you the time, the level, which, which shape it's doing. Is it initializing, the start shape, the branch shape? Um, any specific information, anything that's executing, and then the message itself. And it'll tell you some general information. You can save these to a log file where it'll connect to the atom and it'll save it in your logs. We're going to cancel that. Now it's your turn to do exercise number 11, process reporting, pages 38 to 40. When we return, we're going to be taking a look at document statistics.